And you're probably somewhere near the New Testament because the New Testament will be in the back part of your Bible. That's it. The Gospel according to John. If you find the Gospel according to John, then... Okay, so let's... Let me show you how. So you take the Bible, you split it down the middle, then you take the back, and you split it down the middle again, and then you mark... John is two more books over, so go to the back just a little bit more. Not too much, not too much. Here's John, and find chapter 4. Okay, that's five minutes. Oh, I think we're going to be there. And we'll take the back half and split it half again. Now you got Matthew, and then Mark, Luke, and John. So we'll go a little more to the back and we'll find John. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Here's Matthew. So you're close. Luke, and then textbook. There's John. I see John chapter 4. There's John chapter 4. That's what you want. John chapter 4. Alright, who else has Bibles need to... Yep, that's it. Now find chapter 4. You need help? Can I help with it? Alright. Bible will split in half. And then we'll take, oh, this is just the New Testament, okay? So actually, yours is going to be in the beginning. There's Matthew, Luke, and John. Find out, find the big number four, though, which is on the previous page. I should have got Roman numerals. Here, let me take yours in a second. You've got Roman numerals. I don't think any of you guys know Roman numerals. That's an old Bible. Let's say that the world's old. Pictures? John chapter 4? Yeah, okay, I can hardly see it. Pictures? John chapter 4, you got it. Alright, anybody else? Anybody else? Let's not do that, sweetie. Do not pull the stuff off the bottom of the chair, please. Do not do that, please. All right. That's where our lesson is going to be. You found yours, right? And you found yours? Okay, chapter four, right? You found chapter four? All right, because our time is short, I'm going to go ahead and read this. Listen up, you guys. Listen up. Listen up. Therefore, when the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself didn't baptize but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again to Galilee. But he needed to go through Samaria. So he came to the city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now, Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, sat thus by the well, and it was about the sixth hour, which means about noon. And a woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, how is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. And Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. I'm going to stop right there. Now, Israel was, what the land that we call, put that on please, put that on please. The land that we call Israel was divided into three parts. The north part was called Judea, uh, Galilee. Galilee, and that's where Jesus grew up. The middle part was called Samaria, and the southern part was called Judea. That's where Jerusalem was. That's where all the, the temple was there, and all the religious people were there. Now, people would go from Judea to Galilee, and from Galilee back to Judea. However, in the
the middle was a land called Samaria. And Samaria was full of people who had intermarried. Do you know what that means? Do you know what it means to intermarry? Married, but a different way though. Does anybody understand what intermarried means? No, that's no, that's something else. See, back then, if you were a Jew, that means you were descended from Abraham. Listen up, you guys. Listen up. If you were descended from Abraham, you were only supposed to marry somebody else descended from Abraham. And if you married somebody else, put it on. It was considered a bad thing. That's what they said in intermarrying. And these people, Samaria, had been, they had married other people. And the Jews said, we don't want anything to do with them. They're not one of us. So what they would do is when they needed to travel from one from the south to the north, or from the north to the south, they would actually go around Samaria so they didn't even have to pass through. And they said, you're a Samaritan. I want nothing to do with you. I want nothing to do with you at all. You're not good enough for me. That's how they acted. And so Jesus did something that was very unusual. Jesus went through Samaria. And by going through Samaria, basically he was saying, you are good enough for me. I am one of you and you are one of me. And so when Jesus sat down at the well, and you know how easy it is to get water, right? How, how easy is it to get water? How easy is it to get water? It's so easy that you get it from the sink or your fridge. Right. What do you have to do? Just turn the handle, right? Yeah. Handle. What? On the sink. When you go to the sink, what do you have to do? Just, you just have to turn the handle and the water comes out, right? Yeah. That's all you need to do. Back then, they didn't have sinks. They didn't have plumbing. They didn't have toilets.
So, Jesus was sitting at the well, and a woman came by, and she got water out of the well. Sit down, please. Sit in your seat, please. And when she came from the well with the water, and Jesus said to her, Would you please give me a drink? And she was shocked, because she was a Samaritan, and he was a Jew. And the Samaritans aren't good enough for the Jews. And she goes, why are you, a Jew, asking me for a drink of water? I'm just a Samaritan. Jesus didn't even bother to answer that question. He said, if you knew, he said, if you knew who it was, if you knew the gift of God and who it was that says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. What is that? What is living water? What is living water? No, it's even better than that. What is living water? It's even better than that. What is living water? What is living water? God's loving kindness. What is living water? No, it's even better than that. What is living water? Holy water. Holy water? It's actually better than that. What's that? Okay. Listen. Favor had the best answer. She said it was God's loving kindness. Now, I've, I've watched a lot of you guys go back to get a drink of water. Why do you go get drinks of water? Because we're thirsty. Because you're thirsty, right? You ever been out playing? Okay, this this is a good place. Guys, you you guys are new to Phoenix. And you're going to find this out. It's very dry here. It's very dry here. This is a desert. Okay? Now, I grew up in a place that was not a desert. These, these three are from a place that was not a desert. This is... This is warm, isn't it? Out here, it's, it's like a midsummer for you guys already. But back east, especially in the well, actually more in the southeast than the northeast, but even in the northeast, back east, it's humid. It's sticky, and you you don't really get all that thirsty when you're out playing. Here, it is so dry that you get really, really really thirsty. Now, what happens if you're out playing and you get really thirsty and somebody offers you a glass of cold water? That cold water feels pretty good, doesn't it? Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing, you guys. Listen up. Our hearts get dry. We want somebody to be kind. We want somebody to be good to us. And everybody is being mean. And you just want somebody, somebody please love me. And God is love. God is love. God has the love that you need. He has the love that you want. And when you feel God's love, it's like that drink of cold water on a hot, dry day. It feels really good to your soul. You see, Jesus had some living water for this woman. He had the love of God for her. And he said, all you have to do is ask. All you have to do is ask, and I will give you the living water. Now, he, he was a little less direct with her, though. He said, I'll tell you what. Now, she said, I want this living water that you're talking about that I don't have to go draw from the well. She was thinking it was regular water. He, she said, uh, give me this living water. He said, go call your husband and come here. Go get your husband and come here. She said, I don't have a husband. Guess what he said? You're right. You've had five husbands. And the man that you're with now isn't your husband. How did he know that? How did he know that? Because he, Jesus, was the Son of God. 
And you see, God told him that. And she said, she, she was floored. When, when he said that to her, she was floored. She said, you must be a prophet. Oh, where have we heard that word before? Somebody tell me what a prophet does. Somebody tell me one, one answer, one answer. What does a prophet do? Tell Sid, but one answer, one answer, prophet, tell secrets, and... That's God's word. That's God's word. Someone asked for one. All right, two things that a prophet can do. And this is not by a prophet's own power. This is by God's power. A prophet tells the future. And a prophet tells secrets. Because God knows the future. And God knows what is in your heart. God sees everything. God sees everything. God knows what you're thinking. God sees everything. So God knew that this woman had had five husbands and the man that she was living with was not her husband. He knew that and told that to Jesus. That's how Jesus was to But the living water is the love of God. And if we would accept Jesus into our heart, it will be like the love of God in your heart. Okay, guys, back there. When I'm talking, you're not. Do you understand that? Do you understand that? When I'm talking, you're not. Now, she started to get all religious. Well, you Jews say that you're supposed to go to Jerusalem to worship, but our fathers gave us this well. Jesus wasn't interested in that. He didn't care about religion. All he cares about is the love of God. This isn't the way we always did it. We never did it this way before. God don't care. God doesn't care about the way you did it before. God wants to do a new thing. God wants to love you in a way that you've never known before. That's living water. And that water will never run dry. You remember a couple weeks ago when you guys would go back to the machine there and there was no water in it? Yeah. No. The water ran dry. We'd have to go get... Guys, guys, back here please. Have a seat. Have a seat. You go back to get water and there was no water. We had to figure out how to get you guys water. We found gallon jugs of water in the back so we had to pour them out for you. This water, the love of God, never runs dry. It never runs out. Do you want that living water? Do you want the love of God in your life that never runs out, never runs dry? Yes. I want to invite you to bow your heads and close your eyes. We're going to pray. Father, we thank you for this living water. And we ask you that you would pour it out upon us. Lord, that we would never again be thirsty for your love. That every day and every time, we would feel your love in us. And that it would be refreshing just like a cold drink on a dry day. We thank you, Jesus, for your goodness, for your kindness, and for your faithfulness to us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.